It's time to play another great game. It's Roadrunner's Death Valley Rally for Super NES. Roadrunner's Death Valley Rally for the Super Nintendo was released December 22, 1992 in Japan as Roadrunner vs. Wild E. Coyote and in 1993 on North America as Roadrunner's Death Valley Rally and on September 30, 1993 on Europe as Looney Tunes Roadrunner and this game was released only for the Super Nintendo. Alright, so let's go to the screening room. Here we are in the screening room. Now, what are we doing here? I thought we were going to play the game on a Super NES, not on a film projector. Nice. Alright, now let's turn off the lights and watch its film. Roadrunner's Death Valley Run is better than Roadrunner cartoons, where Kyle or Y.E. Kyle always relies on the electric contacts to catch Roadrunner. And everything Kyle uses to catch Roadrunner always fails miserably and at the worst time possible. And Roadrunner always leaves unharmed, while Coyote always gets harmed by the electric products. It's funny how the acne word is used, because if you look up acne on the dictionary, we're going to see that acne comes from the ancient Greek, and it means ice point, top, or combination. So in the cartoons, the word is used ironically to build something that's not what it really is. And the acne products are not in their highest point. Yes, so let's get started. Um, yeah? Woohoo! Now the game starts just like the beginning of an episode. And the episodes of the game are worlds. And every world has its own theme. The first episode, Sibri Splat, or First World, takes place in the desert, seen in the cartoons. In this game, you play as Roadrunner Boy and Coyote, or Y.E. Coyote, tries to catch you using the ethnic products, just like in the cartoons. The controls feel ok. If I press left or right on the D-pad, Roadrunner will walk and then run. The B button makes Roadrunner jump, and the X button does nothing. If you press the A button, Roadrunner will pack continuously, and it's used to eat bird seed and fill up the energy meter. And also used to attack, but to attack you have to be very close to an enemy, which is dangerous and if you do it wrong, you will take some damage. Now the energy meter is some kind of boost meter. It is shown in the upper left corner of the screen, and if you press the Y button, Roadrunner will run faster than normal. You know what I think what would be really awesome with this game? What? A multiplayer game where one player controls one runner and the other one controls Coyote. That would be pretty awesome. Yeah, that would be great. Like some kind of split screen. Yeah. There are some useless features like pressing the L button, which makes Roadrunner say beep beep, and the R button makes him stick out his tongue. If you hold up on the D-pad and press the L button simultaneously, he's gonna jump and say beep beep. Like I said, it's useless. The gameplay feels good and it's intuitive, like the biggest part of size scroll if they were released. The music are annoying, every episode has its own music, but there's only one music through the whole episode, and this music keeps repeating and repeating. But the music are not cheesy, they are just regular. Now the sound effects are partially good because the only good sound effects are the ones that are available in the game. So the game lacks on sound effects. And finally, the graphics, they look good, they just look like the cartoons. The levels on the game are huge and there are lots of hidden stuff. 
You can't kill Kai, but there are some enemies you can kill such as scorpions and snakes. And you just have to run as fast as you can, avoid Kai and reach the finish line. But there are some flags on every level, and those flags are worth points and also use the chat points. Now some of the flags are very easy to find, but some are incredibly hard. You have to pay attention everywhere on the levels, and if you reach a flag that's after a huge hole or something, there is no coming back, so pay attention everywhere. If you are good enough to get all the flags on a level and finish the level with some of the time, you will get the flag bonus. But there is no need to get all the flags to beat a level. When the first level found this clock which stops time and freezes all the enemies, when the time stops I can see that Kyle is throwing some forts. Man, forts are some serious weapons. I bet those are Acme forks. Those forks are worse than plastic forks. Well, maybe he's intended to eat Roadrunner using those forks, so that makes sense. When you reach the bridge, the bridge will fall and Kyoto will fall with the bridge. If you keep going ahead, Kyoto will appear driving a roller machine. At the end of every level, Kyoto appears failing to get Roadrunner. And in the first level, the roller machine breaks and the wheel falls on Kyoto. Um, yeah, did they? On the second level, Kyle is not going to sing an explosive or planes. You just have to avoid those planes, but those planes will try to follow you and hit you, or they will explode if they don't hit you in a determined amount of time. But Kyle never gives up, he just keeps sending those planes after you. This is a hard level because there are holes everywhere and Roadrunner doesn't stop immediately when you press back to stop. He has some inertia, so if you don't stop in the right time, you may fall to death. In this level, you also have to be very careful and follow all the signs of the level, because those signs will take you to the finish line. Oh, but be careful! There are some extra points after the finish line, so before reaching the finish line, you have to follow all the way back and get those extra points and make your way back to the top of the line. When you finish the line, the Roadrunner will jump on Kyoto's level, and it will burst. After that, you will see the classic cutscene where Kyoto falls a long way down and then hits the ground. On the third level, Kyoto will appear flying wearing a green Batman suit, but it's ridiculous to avoid Kyoto's level, because he doesn't try to kill you. He just keeps flying back and forth, and he is very slow for me. On this level, there are lots of streets that lead you to certain deaths, so if you roll too fast, the Roadrunner will not stop. Because the streets are empty, the so the Roadrunner will walk his way to death. On this level, you will get frustrated, because you will only know that your streets lead you to death when you die on those streets. At the ending of the third level, Kyle to follow Roadrunner, and then he will crash on the wall. And then he falls. Again. Now it's the first boss level. Kyle is holding up a blueprint showing how the machine works and its weak points are marked with big exclamation marks. It's easy to destroy a cat's cat boot, but it takes too much time. You just have to pack its weak point continuously and avoid the spikes and boulders. The boulders take one heart for you, and the spikes take two hearts, and you have only six hearts, so you have to be careful. When avoiding the spikes, be careful not to touch the boulders, because when you go back to avoid the spikes, the boulders will keep falling. So watch your step. When the strike can to get a boat, Kyle will jump to catch you, and then a boulder will fall on him. The cat will to smash Kyle to the ground. Then an opera singer appears, hears her throat and begins to sing. However, Kyle holds up a sign reading, not yet. And then a boulder will follow him. Again. End of World 1, or Episode 1. Now it's Episode 2, Rock and Rivet. This episode takes place in the construction site of the Acme Industries. At the very beginning of the first level, you will see a pile driver, and you can't even touch the side of the pile driver, you or you will take damage. In this level, Kyle is using skates to catch you as fast as he can, and he is very fast, so avoid his fault. 
At this level, there is an annoying pin which is which are toes and crank pins. You can't jump from toes and pins because your jump will be per perpendicular to the pins. So your jump will be inclined. If you go up, you see an anti mechanic shooting cannonballs. But avoiding those cannonballs is easy. The cannonballs it shoots are, are very slow. I think it's because it's an egg mechanic. In this level, there are lots of traps where you get stuck and kite keeps hitting you. It seems that someone decides to take you to those traps. You can jump out of those traps, but to do so, you must have a bit of energy so you can put up enough momentum and run on the wall. Otherwise, you will never build up moment momentum enough and the kite will keep hitting you. This is a huge level, and getting lost here is easy. All the places look the same! At the end of the first level on episode 2, Kart gets crushed by Pile Driver. At the beginning of the second level on episode 2, you see two signs showing scoops. It means that you can jump down. You have to follow the signs. In this level, Kart is in a wrecking ball and getting hit is easy. But there's a flaw in Kart's plan. He is on the wrecking ball and not controlling the wrecking ball. So if he, he gets crushed, what happens? Well, let's find out. Now there is a way to avoid Kite. When you see him appearing at the corner of the screen, press the B button to jump over him. In this level, there are lots of platforms that take you everywhere, and some, the, some platforms that take you to nowhere. At the beginning, you go to the right and you see a shield. The shield makes you temporarily invincible, and in this level, the shield is very useful. And if you keep going right, you'll find a red flag and a trampoline. But to reach this flag, you have to use part of the energy and, and jump on the corner of the pin. Now you have reached the flag. The trampoline you have found can be used as a shortcut, which will, which will take you to a higher platform. And it will save some time. Now you see a platform. When you go up, you see a flag that looks hard to get. Now you have to use part of your energy to reach this flag. But do not use too much power, or you fly over the flag and you will fall in the beginning of the level. If you keep going up, you will see a cement thing try cement. And you can't even touch the cement thing or you take some damage. To avoid the cement thing, wait for it to get up and walk. Now you see a snake. Yeah, a snake. Why there's a snake on a construction site? I mean, snakes like those can be usually found in a desert, but there are snakes on, on the construction site? At the ending of the second level, Kart gets crushed by the wrecking ball and then he falls. Again. Man, I have already seen this cutscene at the end of the second level on episode 1. Oh, I get it! At the end of every second level, no matter which, which episode it is, you will always see a cutscene where Kite falls a long way down. This game is running out of creativity! At the beginning of the third level on episode 2, you will have to jump huge here. But you can fall, because there aren't any holes where you can fall today. When you jump this game, you see that Kaito is using a jackhammer to hit you. Avoiding the Kaito on this level is ridiculous, because Kaito will always jump to hit you. And when he jumps, there is a huge space where you can get through safely. At the ending of the third level on episode 2, Kaito falls inside the cement thing. The cement gets sold and it breaks. When getting on board with the bonuses, I found out that every 50,000 points you score, you get an extra life. Now it's the second boss level. It's basically the same thing as the, on the first boss level. You just have to impact on its weak points which are marked with, with big exclamation marks and destroy Kite's plan. This time Kite is in control of, of a train, where he actually controls the, the wrecking ball, differently from the second level, where he was on the wrecking ball. Avoiding the wrecking ball is easy, but when you reach the train you have to destroy those boxes on, on the floor. But Kite keeps going back and forth, so you must have the exact, exact timing to avoid Kite. Well, let's try the first box, so I think the rest of the boxes should be easy too. No, it isn't. It's hard actually. When Kite sees that you are destroying one of those boxes, he runs the crane on you, which takes one heart for you. When you destroy Kite's crane, Kite will fall through the crane and the wrecking ball will crush him on the ground. Now the opera singer appears again just like in the first boss level, plays her throat and starts singing. However, Kite holds up a sign reading, not yet. Then, then the crane falls on Kite. Now this is a real lack of creativity. First Kite is shown falling the, the exact same cutscene in two different levels, 
Now the other singer appears and does the, the same thing she did in the first boss level. Now what? Let's find out. All I know it's the ending of the episode 2. Now it's episode 3, Train Runner. The majority of this episode takes place in a fast movie circus screen. This level Kites is driving a car with, with springs which goes up and down. But this time he's not only in the ground level because he can change the height of the car springs. In this level there are also other cars, and avoiding those cars is easy, but it's harder to avoid those cars than to avoid Kyle's car. This level is very easy, because you will always be in a place where Kyle can reach you with his car, so just have to pay attention on the enemies ahead. And to make the level easier, there are lots of shields through the level. At the end of the first level in episode 3, Kyle will get cursed by a truck that's coming in the opposite direction. At the second level in episode 3, you are in a circus train. You do have to be careful when jumping from a car to another car, because if you fall from, from a car, you will die instantly. It's clever that there are monkeys trying by the elephants shooting peanuts and giraffes. The kite is flying a rocket. Avoiding him sometimes is hard, because there are places where you can't see nothing, and you only know that he is coming because you can hear the, the noise the rocket makes. Otherwise, avoiding him is easy. This is a huge level, but there aren't places where you can get stuck. You just have to avoid everything that comes in a ray and reach the finish line. The best way to beat this level is to run as fast as you can and reach the finish line, which is above the last giraffe in the level. And you won't even need the checkpoint to beat this level. At the ending of the second level, on episode 3, Kyle flies up in his rocket and explodes like fireworks. And then the fireworks throw a text that reads, Eat a Joe's. Okay, eat a Joe's. At the third level in episode 3, you are still in a circus train. In this level, you can in control for an airplane launching bombs at you. To avoid Kyle's bombs on this level, you just have to stay below a giraffe or, or below a ledge. This level is basically the same thing as the second level in episode 3. You just have to run as fast as you can and you will easily beat this level. But in this level, there are some cars that you can jump to because those cars don't have floor. And you have to launch yourself to the skies by running on the giraffe's necks, and you usually beat this level. Easier than the second level in episode 3. But at the ending of the third level in episode 3, Kyle falls from his airplane, and all the bombs on the airplane fall with him. Then all the bombs explode and they touch Kyle. Now it's the third boss level. In this boss level, Kyle's on a train that shoots bombs on you. You have to avoid those bombs as they fall, and to pack the bombs on Kyle's trains near you. So the boss will be thrown on Kyle's train chimney, which is Kyle's train weak point. You have to hit Kyle's train six times to destroy it. Oh, but you can't even touch those bombs or they will explode. Every time you hit Kyle's train, Kyle will launch lots of bombs and you just have to avoid those bombs. Because those bombs will explode as, as they touch the floor. To avoid those bombs, you just have to jump from a car to another car. Seems easy. When you destroy Kyle's train, it will fall from the bridge. And you know what happens next? Yes, you do! It's that cutscene where Kite falls a long way down. Again! Then that opera singer appears again and does the same thing she did on the other boss levels. Again! However, Kite holds up the same reading, not yet. Then the train hits Kite. I was thinking that the lack, a lack of creativity in this game couldn't get any worse, but I was wrong. It got worse. The game designers got the cutscene where the coyote falls a long way down and put it together with the, the cutscene where the opera singer appears, clears her throat and starts to sing. Yeah, it's a real lack of creativity. Now it's episode 4, Hopalong Casualty. This episode takes place, place in a cave full loaded with explosives, explosive female roadrunners, bats, and the car doesn't appear in the biggest part of this episode. At the first level in episode 4, there are explosives, and every time something explodes, it will start to fall lots of rocks, but the places where the rocks fall is predictable, so avoiding those rocks is easy. At the end of the first level in episode 4, Kyle uses some dynamites to catch Road Runner, but those dynamites will fail and it explodes on Kyle. At the second level in episode 4, Kyle is in a minecart and avoiding him is easy. This level is very easy because Kyle will appear in some parts of the level. And the level itself is easy because there are a few obstacles and avoiding those obstacles is easy. This is also a fast level, you just have to run as fast as you can and when you reach the finish line, you will notice that you haven't lost any health. 
At the ending of the second level in episode 4, Kite will crush his minecart and he will get stuck in the minecart. At the third level in episode 4, there are lots of hidden drills on the walls and floor. In this level, you have to stop everywhere and wait for the drills to disappear. Seems easy. At the ending of the third level in episode 4, Kurt will catch a fake roadrunner thinking that it's the real roadrunner and it will explode because it causes some rocks to fall on Kite. And now it's the fourth boss level. In this boss level, Kite has control of a drilling rig. To destroy Kite's drilling rig, you have to get on it and destroy some boxes, which are Kite's drilling rig weak points. It's the same idea as the second boss level, where you have to destroy some boxes to destroy Kite's crane. Ok, they got the idea of the second boss level and put it on the fourth boss level. How original! This is a real lack of creativity! So to reach those boxes on Kite's drilling rig, you have to jump on the drills, wait for it to form some kind of stairs. Now you can get on it and destroy those boxes. It seems easy, but when you reach those boxes, the drilling rig will crush you on the ceiling, which is full of spikes. So every time you destroy a box, you, you have to jump from those things that you crush you on the ceiling. When you destroy Kite's drilling rig, it will explode, and then Kite, which is psychologically affected, will act like Rude Runner by taking out his tongue and making it big big. You know what happens next, because this game and the game designers lack creativity. It's that opera singer. She does the same thing she did on the other boss levels, and Kite holds up a sign reading not yet, and then... Hey, what's that? Uh, it's Marvin the Martian? He takes you to warp machine which warps you to a space station. Oh, it's that creativity that, that I thought that wouldn't happen in the game. I think the game has a salvation. Marvin the Martian the game? That is great! Now it's episode 5, Button B. This episode takes place on a moon, a space station. Hey, if it's the moon, why there's another moon in the background? I mean, the place where I am looks like the moon surface. But there's another moon in the background. Why? Well, I guess we'll never know. At the first level in episode 5, Kurt is flying a uh, jet thing which is... Uh, I don't know. In this level there are lasers everywhere, flying eyeballs, and this level is a real maze. You just have to ignore all the traffic signs. Where's the finish line? Where's it? Oh, here it is. It's below a ramp and I haven't noticed that before. At the end of the first level in episode 5, Kurt gets tossed by a laser and then he falls. At the second level of an episode 5, cuts in control of 5 things that shoots electrical charges. But the electrical charges it shoots will always miss you. And you know why it happens? Because it attacked me! In this level you have to use the warp machine. To use a warp machine, it will turn heat up on the deep end. All the warp machines in this level have numbers, and those numbers represent the place where you will be warped to. If you enter a warp machine with the number 1 on it, you will be awarded to another warp machine with the number on it. This level is easy, because you just have to enter the warp machines as the number of the warp machines increase. At the end of the second level in episode 5, Roadrunner enters a warp machine that says that's it. And Coyote will jump from his flying machine that shoots electro chargers to, to catch Roadrunner, but Roadrunner will be warped before Coyote catches him. At the third level in episode 5, Kite is flying on that jet wing again. In this level, there are some machines that will transform Kite, and when he leaves the machine, he will be using another miss to catch him. There is this machine where Kite can transform into a huge Kite. When you leave this part, the giant Kite will get, will get through the wall. What? He can get through the wall, but I can't? How unfair! At the end of the third level in episode 5, Roadrunner and Kite will enter a transforming machine. Roadrunner will be transformed to a giant size, and Kite will be transformed to back to his normal size. Now it's the fifth boss level. In this boss level, Kite controls a giant robotic replica of his head, armed with missiles. I think this is the last boss of the game. This boss has several weak points, and those weak points are the face ears and the light bulb when it zooms. When you see the real thing, you know how huge it is. It's a real huge head that Coyote built. 
It's really scary. To try to get robotic head, you have to start with the light bulb in its nose. But to try it, you have to wait for it to turn on. Then you can attack its light bulb nose. But you have to be careful because when it turns off, the robot will shoot missiles from its mouth. You also can touch the light bulb when it's fired on. When you try the light bulb nose, you will see that there are two satellite dishes on its face. Destroying two satellite dishes is easy, but you just have to be careful because the robot shoots electro charges from its eyes and also missiles, and the missiles it shoots will follow you. Now, it would be awesome if the robot shot laser from its eyes. When you destroy those satellite dishes, there will appear two more satellite dishes in its ears. When you destroy the two less satellite dishes, Kite's giant robotic head will explode and then Brute Runner will make beep beep, which will start with Kite. Kite falls from his giant robotic head and... Oh no, is it gonna happen or I'm thinking? No, it isn't gonna happen. So the game designers got a cutscene where Kite falls a long way down and modified it a bit to make, it, to make him fall towards the earth. I think that's the only thing that was really creative in the whole game. So Kite falls towards the earth and then he holds up a sign reading, how about I ended this game before I hit? Then there is a cutscene where Kite falls a long way down. But what? I can't even say that the game designers were really creative at least once. I think that the only part that they were really creative is when Kite falls towards the earth. So Kite hits the ground, he becomes embedded to the ground right before the finish line. Then an acme truck fully loaded with acme explosives bumps over a block, dropping all the explosives onto Kite. Road Runner runs by, stares at Kite for a moment and makes beep beep and reaches the finish line. Kite looks up, takes an umbrella and Dr. Singer falls and pushes him, mercy. Kite sends an arm holding a white flag, so Kite finally gave up. Now the credits. When the credits roll, the game ends with That's all, folks. What is this the end of the game? Already? Oh, I know it. This game is real easy. You can easily beat it under 3 hours. Now, I said it was a good game, but no, it isn't. Wanna know why? Well, it's because the game designers lacked some creativity on biggest part of the game. I mean, the same annoying opera singer appears at the ending of every boss level, and also the use and reuse cutscene that shows Kyat falling a long way down. This is a real lack of creativity. Oh, I get it. I think the idea behind reusing the same cutscene is to encourage players to recycle the trash. So I think we should recycle this game to make better quality games. That was an acne recycling bin, so I guess it makes sense. So kids, recycle your trash. So Roadrunner's Death Valley Rally for Super NES is a real lack of creativity. I don't have any other words for this game besides lack of creativity. That's, That's all, all folks! folks.